Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. Got some more Master Duel for you. I got more Ad Emancipator. Uh, I've been playing this deck a whole lot ever since I built it. This is still like the same night that I built it, and I've already made like was this my third, fourth, I think my fourth video tonight just going over this deck. Oh, I can't get enough of it. Yeah, I've been having it, like I said, a ton of fun playing Ad Emancipators here. Uh, the deck is very, very powerful. I mean, it's obviously, you know, it's a tier two deck, but. Uh, you know, don't let the fact that it's tier 2 or maybe it's power ranking compared to other tier 2 decks fool you. This deck is very, very strong in its own right, and the boards, the end boards it can put out, are sometimes even scarier than, like, Drytron's Herald. <clears throat> in any case, let's go ahead and start taking a look at the list here. I'm going to briefly list just the cards that are in my deck so you're aware of my build for these upcoming games. If you'd like to see a more detailed description of what is in the deck and how the deck works, you can go ahead and check out my description. There you'll find links to the deck profile, the combo guide, as well as a list of the cards in the deck all typed out for you. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. We've got a Dragon Buster Destruction Sword, two Tenny Spirit Adahara, three Max C. Uh, one Mecha Phantom Beast O Lion, two Doki Doki, one Prank Kid Dropsies, three Adam Emancipator Seeker, three Adam Emancipator Researcher, three Ash Blossom, one Gigantes, three Quacky Mirror Guardian, three Prank Kid Roxies, three Adam Emancipator Analyzer, three Quacky Mirror Supplier, three Block Dragon, two Nibiru the Primal, Primal Being, excuse me, and three Sekka's Light. Here in the extra deck, we've got a Herald of Arc Light, Adam Emancipator Risen Reptite. Warload Savage Dragon, Adam Emancipator Risen Dragite, we got a Gallant Granite as well as Link Spider, Prank Kids Meow Meow Moo, uh, Christron Halkif, Halkif Brax, I can never ever say that card's name right, <laughs> um, Nightmare Phoenix, Prank Kids Doodle Doodle Doo, IP Mascarena, Union Carrier, Nightmare Unicorn, Appalachia Bow of the Goddess, and Access Code Talker to round out the extra deck there. Yeah, so I don't know really what else to say about this deck except I just can't sing its praises enough. I love, I just love it. I love, 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 love it. Um, yeah, so actually I can say this much though. I have some uh, highlight kind of reels to show you from a practice session I did off screen where I actually hit a bit of a win streak. If we go over to Duel here, I can show you if the game, you know, will load here. Yeah, I caught a six-game win streak playing uh, at Emancipators here. So, yeah, that was pretty nice. Uh, pretty nice way to uh, <laughs> kind of end my testing session here. Yep, three. Or not three. <laughs> I don't know why I said three. Yep, six wins in a row here. So, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of these games. I did leave two of them out because it was literally just I took the first turn. I would play an Ad Emancipator, start to excavate, my opponent would just concede immediately. Presumably they just didn't have any hand traps and they kind of just knew the combo that was coming. But let's take a look at some of those other games that are at least a bit more interesting there. Okay, the first game is coming up here. This is going to be against a, uh, it was some sort of 60 card variant. I don't remember off the top of my head uh, what exactly it was all running. I think it might have been like a uh, Phantom Knights, maybe some Burning Abyss or something, but take a look at our opening hand. We got a Sekka's Light. The rest of our hand isn't too great here, though. We've got a Dragon Buster Sword, a Roxy's, and a Block. We do have the Block Dragon, which is pretty good. We draw another Sekka's Light, which has been unfortunate, and yeah, there are other Sekka's Light gets us a Max C, but we at least have the Seeker to start our plays here, so I'm going to summon that and then activate the effect, of course, to excavate. We're going to go ahead and get a Quacky Mirror Guardian. Unfortunately, I don't have the luxury to just leave it on the board like I tend to like to, so we're going to have to go into our Chris drawn here in order to start setting up our plays. Uh, I'm going to actually get a researcher here instead of an O lion because I want to set up a third earth in my graveyard in order to be able to make a block dragon here. We're going to go into unicorn and then banish our three earths in grave for aforementioned block dragon. So it's going to be only two materials instead of three, but we do get to make Appalachia here. And with Block Dragon's effect, we get to add, of course, the Gigantes, the Researcher, and the Seeker. So, you know, it kind of looked like that might have been the end of our plays, and for, you know, a normal deck, that might have been the case. But with Adam Emancipators and its ability, let's just be honest, with Block Dragon and its ability to uh, recur resources so efficiently, we are able to instead just keep on continuing here. So, we got a Roxy's with our... 
uh, researchers, so that means we're able to go into the Prank Kids line where we, you know, Roxy's send for uh, Meow Moo. And we're gonna get the droplets here. I'm not gonna keep going into the Dodo because I actually want to use the Meow Meow Moo in order to go into a Union Carrier for my upcoming Boral Sword. I always say Boral Sword, uh, Borload Savage Dragon. But first, we're gonna go ahead and seek for Raptite and get the excavation. Gonna get Analyzer because our other Adamantipators cannot get an uh, Analyzer, they get non tuners. Yeah, indeed, we are going into Bore Load here. And we already have a Nightmare Unicorn Engrave. Normally, we don't get to equip a Link 3, but we get a little bonus attack as well as an extra Boral counter. Not that that's really a huge deal. I mean, y y equipping a Link 2 is totally fine. Uh, you'll, you'll usually never need more than two Negates. I've never needed more. I think I've only never even used more than one, to be honest. But, yep, so like I said, we're going to send the Analyzer as well as the Meow Meow Moo in order to summon our Link Carrier. With that, we can attach the Dragon Buster, and then we can use the Dropsies as well as the extra Supplier that we got out in order to make IP Mascarena to potentially go into a Link play during our opponent's turn with Union Carrier. So, yeah, we had a bit of an awkward start there, but as you can see, even with that bit of an awkward start, we're still able to set up our main kind of negates here. But it's going to call by, presumably, to try to get me to use a negate. Of course, I'm not going to fall for it there. Uh, I did miss the maxi against the jackalope here. I, for, I didn't realize that this would special summon for some reason off the top of my head. I didn't know that. So, But I will in, uh, maxi in response to the uh, little snake here. It's Nuka... Sukin... I'm not going to try. <laughs> the, the snake. We all know the snake. Yeah, the opponent's going to flip a grass. And yeah, it looks like they were. I saw, yeah, the Burning Abyss monsters. Ah, yes. Uh, my opponent does a good bit of chain blocking here. The way to put Alec at chain link 1 to negate our bull sword. Uh, get the special summon from the hand on chain link 2. And then on chain link 3, they're going to bounce their own spell or trap. So no use in negating, so I'm not going to. Yep, we do lose our boar counters and our equip from the Savage Dragon being negated, which I actually did not know uh, before that happened there, so that is good to know. Opponent's got a monster reborn as well. However, even though we lost our equip and Boros is negated, uh, the Buster Dragon is not negated. The inability for our opponent to summon from the extra deck is its own effect. So, yeah, even though they can monster reborn our Nightmare Unicorn, they still can't go into anything from their extra deck with what's on board. Yeah, before they move into the battle phase, we're going to link away into access code so that we don't lose our Masquerader in battle because her quick effect can only be used during the main phase. Important thing to note, but yeah, at that point our opponent concedes as they realize they have no way of winning. We can just clear their board on our turn and then attack for game. So, yep, yeah, that's a pretty nice example of how to play out of a what seemed like a below average hand still got us a pretty good setup. So, okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next game. Alright, we're starting up the next one here, and I actually forgot to check what the uh, deck was, so we'll find out as the game progresses here. See if I remember before they play anything. Opening hand's a bit awkward, we've got Ash, Double Guardian, and Double Sekka's Light. We can at least use the Sekka's Light to hopefully draw into some amount of plays. We drew the Buster Dragon, which is not that great, and a Roxy is also not a super great draw. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and summon Guardian and pass here. Because I figure between that and Nibiru, we can at least set up some amount of protection. I remember this is actually against Trizu, this game is. So, yep, they're going to go ahead and activate Tenki for Fractal. I'm going to not Ash to Tenki. I'm going to wait for the Fractal and then Ash that. So, between the Guardian and the Nibiru, I'm feeling fairly confident in my ability to stop my opponent's plays and at the very least survive this turn. Uh, beyond that, though, we only have a Roxy's and we do have a Sekka's Light, which will get us more draws, so... We're going to need a little bit more in order to actually make our own plays, though. Opponent's going to normal summon the Zodiac and then go into Dryden to force my Guardian, which of course I'm going to respond to so they don't get a zoo set up. But then that's going to leave our opponent able to use the Keros from their hand, so a good play on my opponent's start, uh, part rather, to force the Guardian negation so that they can freely get their plays off here. So they're going to activate Kiros' effects, summon Ferrajit, and then with Ferrajit they're going to get Fractal. I'm going to go ahead and drop Nibiru at this point, thinking I'm pretty good here, you know, my opponent's normal, there's no way they have any more resources. Uh, sure, they get the draw, but, I mean, what else could they really do at this point? Well, uh, this player is actually using Monster Reborn, which is going to allow them to get back their Fractal, which I definitely wasn't anticipating, so kudos to my opponent there. Um, arguably, maybe I should have waited to use Nibiru before they fractaled, but I didn't want them to get Bear Broom on board because I didn't want them to search a revolt. 
as that would be pretty bad for them to be able to banish and disrupt on my turn. So my opponent's going to set a card. I'm going to play, assuming it's either Imperm or Revolt. Could also be a Droplet as well. Those are going to be the main threatening back rows from Trizu. Obviously, we know the matchup pretty well because we know Trizu very well. So I'm going to Special Analyzer, and sure enough, my opponent is going to flip up the Revolt here. Uh, they're going to Special Summon the Kit. The Dryden. They're just going to go into a Link 3. That's all they have space for. But they're able to banish the Analyzer with Omen's effects before I can get its effect off. So... We do at least have Block Dragon now, as well as, you know, the Guardian, Roxy's, and Suppliers, so even though we're going to lose our Analyzer here, we are actually still able to get a fair amount of plays, and I'll show you how that is. Because it's pretty easy to think, like, oh, we don't have any of our Ad Emancipator starters, like, how are we supposed to, you know, play into this board? Well, I'll show you. We're going to Normal Summon Roxy's and go into the usual Prank Kid engine here, which is so, so good. I see... A very slim, not many, but a slim number of Ad Emancipator builds not using the Prank Kids engine, and I'd be interested to kind of see some of those builds in action, because I can't imagine a stack without the Prank Kids. They're so good. But yeah, since Roxy's got sent to the graveyard, we're able to special summon the Supplier from our hand. So we'll do the whole play of sending Droplets and Meow Meow Moo in order to summon the Dodo Doodle Doo. Um, that is going to enable us to go into further link plays by summoning the Roxies. Opponent's going to get Rugal for Nerval. That's not really going to affect me here. We now have enough Earth set up in Grave for the Block Dragon, which I'm going to now summon. From here, we can go into a Link 4. I'm going to go into Access Code. I don't need to go into Appalachia because my opponent isn't going to have any more effects to negate. And I'm going to end up using the Access Code in order to clear their board to eventually strike for Lethal. But we're not going to do it just yet because we're going to clear... Uh, most of our opponent's monsters are actually using another method. As always, since we sent Block Dragon, we get Gigantes, Researcher, and Seeker, because Block Dragon is just an absurd card that single-handedly lets us go into the other half of our plays. So, we have the Supplier out already. We can Special the Researcher, go ahead and get that Excavation. We unfortunately whiff, so let's go ahead and get Seeker and go for that Excavation. And if I recall correctly, we actually whiff twice in a row here, so... Yeah, not the best, uh, not the best luck in the world, but it's actually not going to even end up mattering because we can just go Seeker and Supplier into the Raptite. Now we get Raptite's Excavation, which has a much better chance of not whiffing, although of course now we just get a Supplier. We could have used that on either of the first two Excavations, but again, can't complain too much. We're still going to end up with a pretty amazing board either way. We're going to get Analyzer with Raptite because we haven't used that Excavate yet, so let's go ahead and do that for our third Excavate here. And we get a Doki Doki off of that one. We can go ahead and use Seca's Light, which we haven't used up till this point. We'll put back the Ash, because I don't foresee us needing it. Because uh, I think the game is going to be over on this turn. We'll go ahead and now move into our Boral Sword Savage... Boral Load? I always say Boral Sword, I don't know why. Uh, Boral Load Savage Dragon for the potential negates here. We can go ahead and Synchro next for Dragite. And now we're going to be able to use Dragite's Excavate effect to hopefully bounce a lot of our opponent's cards back to their hand. So there is a Supplier, there is a Seeker, and a Block Dragon makes three rock monsters, exactly enough to bounce the token and the extra deck monsters. We can now Special Summon our Gigantes and the Doki Doki. We don't really even have to do this part necessarily, but I'm going to Union Carrier and slap on that Dragon a destruction sword just because I can. Now we'll go ahead and use Access Code Talker, banishing the remaining two links in our graveyard, or rather, the remaining link in our graveyard and the Union Carry On Field to pop our opponent's cards. And as you can see, we now have far more than enough damage to attack for lethal. So, once again, a nice game showing how, you know, seemingly we might have like a bad setup where our opponent flipped the revolt on our analyzer and then banished it before we could activate the effect. And then it's like, oh no, we don't have any Ad Emancipators to go off with. What do we do? Well, there's no need to panic. Uh, as you can see, even with just the Roxies and the Supplier, we were still able to set up a very, very nice board that was able to attack our opponent for game. So, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and move right on into the next one. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this next game here.
Let's take a look. Ah, yes, this game. As you can see, unlike the other games where we've had to cope with not-so-great opening hands, here we have, like, one of the better opening hands you could ask for. Not only do we have Adahara, but we have one of each of the Adam Anticipator quote-unquote starters. We've got an Analyzer, a Seeker, and a Researcher. So, we'll special the Adahara, begin with Normal Summoning Analyzer, who we whiff on. That's alright, though. We still have plenty of other excavations to go. Let's Special Summon Seeker. We get the Kwaki Mirror Guardian, who we always love to see. See, and I'm going to go for it as a means of insurance on this board. I mean, obviously they haven't Maxi or Ash, so we already know they don't have that, but they could still have Nibiru, so definitely want to go for Guardian early if possible. We're going to go ahead and link away into our Crystron, get on, get out the Mecha O-Lion as always. Now we can special summon the Analyzer and go for another Excavate. Looks like we hit Doki Doki's, so we can go ahead and summon that to the board. And I'm not going to bother trying to activate Doki Doki here. Obviously, I don't even really care about getting the other Nibiru out. I'm just going to go ahead and seek for a Raptite, which is going to enable another Excavate right away. Yep, we're just going to go ahead and keep chaining these Excavates in order to just keep getting more pluses. We get a Roxy's. We always love, love, love to see Roxy's out of the Excavate. Although here we don't have enough room to go into the Prank Kids line. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into the Gowns Grant because we do need to eventually go into our Block Dragon here. So... Um, yeah, my opponent didn't get any procs to respond at all while I had the Guardian up, so I was confident they didn't have Nibiru or any other hand traps to stop us, so I was comfortable using it as a Link material to go into the Granite for the Block Dragon for the Appalachia for now the Surges, as we know. Um, I can't, I feel, I've said it every single game, I think every time I get these Surges, like how stupid of a great card Block Dragon is. Like, if I searched one rock, that would be one thing, but the fact that they can get up to three is just ridiculous. So we'll go ahead and use the O-Lion as a material to sink for the Boral load here. We've got the Crystron in the graveyard, so we can go ahead and set up the Boral counters. And, of course, we are always going to want to link away our token for a Link Spider to set up the Earth material. We'll go ahead and use that with the Researcher in order to Link Summon our Union Carrier, which is going to set up the Destruction Sword on the Boral Sword, ensuring that our opponent is unable to Special Summon from the extra deck. And we can go ahead and summon our Block Dragon back from the Graveyard, because why not? Let's go ahead and Special Summon Gigantes. Ah yes, I remember this now, because now we can go into IP Masquerina, and if we look in our Graveyard here, we actually do still have three more Earth Monsters, so we can actually just get our Block Dragon back out yet again. Which is definitely overkill and probably not necessary, but, you know... It's definitely still right to do, because if our opponent gets rid of it on our turn, we can search. And it looks like our opponent's playing Numerons. They immediately answer all of our negates with the Lava Golem. Very scary there. They're going to activate the Numeron Network, but since we set up the IP Mask Arena, we can quickly go into a Nightmare Unicorn during our opponent's main phase. Now, this is going to let us discard our what, extra Emancipator card and shuffle their Numeron Network back. They're going to drop a Lava Golem to get rid of the rest of our board in defense mode, so we can't attack them with it. But again, since we summoned the Block Dragon, we get the Block Dragon Surges. Very nice for us. Our opponent's just going to go ahead and concede. We obviously have more than enough resources to summon enough attack points for game. Alright, we've got one last game here. It's going to be a quick one. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm not even going to bother with the transition, because like I said, this is just going to be a fairly quick game here. Yep, alright, let's see here. Looks like we are going to get the second turn, but we opened Maxi and Ash, which we like to see. The rest of our hand is really good, too. Analyzer, Block Dragon, and Sekka's Light. This is like one of the best second hand turns you could possibly ask for. Our opponent's gonna Desires. We've got a Nash, though. Looks like we're playing against another uh, 60 card deck here. Uh, yep, it's a Shadal variant. They're going to try to Shadal Fusion. I'm going to Maxi in response. And obviously, it's because we don't have any monsters now, our opponent's going to have to Shadal Fusion uh, using the materials from hand. So, we always like to see that, you know, you, our opponent using more resources than uh, they would like to. And that's going to put them at a disadvantage, uh, especially in terms of advantage compared to us. We even drew, like, a Researcher off of this Maxi. Like, this hand is going to be absurd. There's a Roxy's. I mean, just an extra monster. It doesn't really do anything for us in hand, but still nice to have. But it's going to get a Shadal Fusion back to their hand. I'm not really concerned with that. 
Uh, we have our Phenomenal Hand. I'm pretty confident I can just end the game on this turn, especially because we draw Doki Doki on top of it. Like, this is just overkill at this point. So, we'll stick as light. We'll go ahead and special summon the Analyzer and activate the Excavation effect. We even peel Guardian off of our first Excavation. Like, what more could you literally, like, even ask for? This is, like, the perfect going second setup. That's kind of why I wanted to keep this game, even though it was quick, because, uh, you know, I just... <laughs> You couldn't ask for a better setup, so this is how kind of quote unquote how to go second with this deck. We get a Roxy's Excavate, so we can go ahead and move into the Prank Kids line of plays. As usual, setting up the Meow Meow Moo, um, getting the Banished Draw an Extra card, especially the Dropsies, going into the Dodo Doodle Do, and then setting up another Roxy's. As always, getting that free Link 2 out is going to be very beneficial in helping us to set up our board here. At this point, we can go ahead and perform a Synchro Summon. We're actually going to Synchro for level 8 first. We're going to move into Dragite and use Dragite's Excavation to get rid of the cards on our opponent's board. We just have to hit two rocks, which we do right off the bat. It's not too hard to hit at least two rocks with Dragite, typically. So we go ahead and bounce those, summon the Doki Doki, and then at this point, yeah, our opponent realizes that they are just done for. We easily have enough. Uh, materials between our hand and our board to make well over 8,000 points of damage. You can even, like, I've made boards where I make, like, 20,000 points of damage on board, 16,000 points of damage. It's not that difficult, and it's kind of absurd. Uh, if your opponent doesn't have the hand traps to stop you, you can really just completely go off and not even... Yeah, not even have to worry about it, but okay, as always, we're go going to go ahead and take one last look at the deck here before we end off the video. Okay, everybody, I just want to thank you so, so much for watching, especially all the way to the end of the video here. That always means a whole lot to me, um, especially those of you who are liking, commenting, and subscribing. Oh my god, I actually, I've been trying to avoid saying specifically like, comment, and subscribe this whole time, and there it is. It just slipped out completely organically for the very first time in this whole master duel extravaganza so i mean if you want to do any of those things great if you're just watching that's great too either way i completely appreciate it so yeah adam Pater's love this deck expect to see more of it as i continue to play more of it and continue to have a whole lot of fun doing so so yeah like i said that is going to do it for today um thank you again blah 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 you know the whole drill i always end the videos this way but there's really no other way i could end the video because without you guys like I'd just be playing Master Duel. I just wouldn't be having as much fun with it. But, uh, yep. Uh, this is Hexlex signing out. I hope you have a fantastic day.